I'm going to give you a choice. There is a blue car and a red car. You can take the blue car, which will take you to a world of reboots and remakes that are designed to keep audiences satisfied and entertained based on the nostalgia of the original work, while the red car will take you as far away from this and drive you off the edge of a cliff. The rabbit hole no longer has any purpose in the film industry. It's all about remakes. The Matrix is just another new victim being tortured by Hollywood. It's taken one of the most iconic movies of all time and destroyed its legacy. The Matrix Resurrections was just the final nail in the coffin to send this franchise to sleep. But how did it all go wrong? The Matrix should never have failed. It was too good to fail. It embodied everything that cinema goers wanted in an action film. The martial arts merged with philosophical themes were an unthinkable match and yet they blended so well. The cinematography and visual effects were like nothing anyone had seen before. And despite the success, it took four years until the sequel was released. This and Return of the King were the most anticipated movies of the year. But only one was deemed a masterpiece while the other was massively underwhelming. Care to guess which one sucked? Well, it didn't suck, but it was a huge disappointment. The Matrix was fantastic. Reloaded was not. Why? I don't know. But maybe this will answer that pressing question. I mean, who thought that this was a good idea? It went on for like five minutes. This one scene encapsulated both sequels for me. It was confusing, awkward, and just wrong. What really annoyed me about Reloaded was the world building, the lore, and the introduction of the numerous characters who just seemed forced into the main storyline. They have pointless characters like G.I. J. No, I can't say it. I know what's coming next if I do. The action was still good and definitely the highlight of the film, although the multiple agent smiths did get out of hand. And then you had The Matrix Revolutions. There's no other way to put this. It was boring. There was nothing to care about. I think many people were hoping this movie would answer for the confusing plot points in Reloaded. It did not do that. In fact, it did the opposite. You not only walk out of Revolutions severely underwhelmed by its conclusion, but you're just as confused from the moment you witness that baffling Zion dance. There were moments where it felt like I was watching cutscenes from Halo. They just focused on these characters who were given no thought whatsoever into their development, which is why I didn't care if they survived or died. I wouldn't have had a problem with it, but the way they introduce these characters was so forced and just came out of nowhere. They focus on this kid who wants to join in the revolution, but he's too young. And that's his storyline. He just pops out of nowhere and suddenly I have to be invested in his character. I mean the whole of Revolutions is just one giant CGI monster fest. There is nothing else to it. And at the end when they win, I felt nothing. It wasn't a satisfying conclusion at all. Humankind are finally free from the machines, but it was such a chore getting over this movie. Why was the sky a rainbow? You can't just end the movie there without any explanation. What put people off from the Matrix sequels was how different it was from the first. And when I say different, I mean worse. The story the stark contrast of the slick leather jackets and sunglasses to these underground hobos was a terrible idea. Nothing about Zion was remotely cool. It was like watching something from a YA dystopian novel. The dialogue was plain and dull. The Matrix was loved for its action and its ideas about reality. What is real and what is false? These philosophical ideas of human nature and perception were thrown out of the window for this war against machines. The focus was on something more mundane and safe. It wasn't innovative like the first Matrix. It was trite and predictable. But at least they tried doing something that they thought was creative. Something that was daring. It was just the execution that made it so crap. In The Matrix Resurrections, there is no attempt of originality. There is no attempt from Keanu Reeves to get a goddamn haircut so I don't get confused that I'm not watching a John Wick movie. It's just as bad as Reloaded and Revolutions, but I appreciate those movies more than this one because it wasn't being annoying. I compare this movie to The Force Awakens, a sequel that is secretly a reboot. It carries on the story of the old, but they follow the exact same beats without any sense of creativity. Oh, they have a Death Star, but it's three times bigger. The ideas in Resurrections are not as blatant, but they really go into the remake reboot theme with all guns blazing. And they implement this into the story to appear meta. And I have to say, I hated it. It's alright watching it for the first time, but I have no intention of watching it because of how condescending the writing and the characters were. I get that this was made as an apology to the sequels, but this movie didn't progress the world of the Matrix at all. I mean, they made Zion slightly bearable but that was about it. It just kept hammering you with clips from the 1999 Matrix. Director Lana Wachowski wanted to remind you of how good the Matrix was. But how does that help the movie I'm currently watching? 
What good does that do? You introduce these new but not so original characters, but at the end you don't really know a thing about them. And then they bring back the same characters but with different actors. The Agent Smith guy, just what a downgrade that is. You take out the most entertaining actor from the franchise and replace him with this guy. It's like you wanted the movie to fail. They couldn't even bring Lawrence Fishburne back. But you know how Warner Brothers' mind thinks. Let's just cast another black actor. They won't tell the difference. But back to Agent Smith. This actor was trying so hard to be scary. He did the opposite. He turned into a clown. And not the scary kind, more like Krusty the Clown. He had the energy of a high school bully turned stockbroker. He felt like a generic villain and at no point did he embody the original Agent Smith. His lines were also dumb. Wow, the Matrix, after all these years, we're going back. This was a huge issue I had with the movie. Every chance I got to make a reference was so poorly executed. It felt like Marvel humour. You know, like, we have a Hulk. That kind of smug, self-aware humour where they're trying to act above everything. And then you have the analyst. And when you think of who should play a terrifying antagonist, I can't think of anyone better than this guy. How? Oh. In all seriousness, he is actually a good actor. He has a great body of work in theatre and has received numerous accolades over the years. But here's a crazy question. At any point of the movie, did you feel unnerved by him? Did he give off the menacing aura of the iconic villains of the past? No, he didn't. Sure, he was better than this guy, but that's a low bar to begin with. I'll admit, some scenes went into interesting directions with him, but it was never fully realised. I was confused because it felt as though the writers were lost in terms of who the central villain was. Was it the analyst or this knockoff version of Agent Smith? I struggled to follow the plot because I didn't know where the story was heading. It was extremely irritating the amount of references to the original movie they made. It wasn't even necessary. I have a feeling they did this because Wachowski and Warner Brothers think that because there has been an 18 year gap between this movie and the last, that people would have forgotten what happened. And so showing the clips from the past three movies would give them a quick reminder of what happened. So they have to patronise the audience with old footage. And this old footage isn't even conveyed with any subtle intent. They just smash cut to the scene and back like I just experienced a seizure. And they also use the old footage for Neo's game, which makes no sense because I've never seen a game with live action graphics. Now the game narrative itself was kind of a good idea in theory. It just wasn't executed with any intelligence, sharpness or logic. And it didn't help that all of the people who were working on the game were annoying as hell. The way they were dressed was obnoxious and the words coming out of their mouth made me wish they were mute. This cannot be another reboot, retread, regurgitate. Oh, why not? Reboot sell. This is my problem with it. You could explore this idea of trending remakes and reboots in the media industry without coming off as condescending. It's the way this man just looks at Neo like he's aware and in on the joke. They're trying to be meta but it takes you out of the experience rather than into it. It's just dumb. I honestly hated these characters. I get that they were acting in that deliberate way. I mean we're all supposed to feel like Neo, lost and irritated. Except I will be a little more angered and do something I will most likely regret. Like bomb the whole room. As much as this first act was quite frustrating, it was still more entertaining than when Neo realises he was living a false reality. Because then we have to put up with Bugs Bunny and Morpheus from Wish. I know he isn't a bad actor. He was actually doing his best with what he was given. But this was such a downgrade from Lawrence Fishburne. Was this casting done to bring in a younger audience? You wanted a younger Smith. Did that work out? No, you made it worse. Why was that guy ever gonna work? It's revealed in a non-surprising way that Neo's image is actually some old guy. And this was designed by the Matrix so no one would know that Neo existed. But why did Neo himself see his own real image? This was never explained. If I had to guess, I would say it's because he still has memories implanted into his subconscious of the events. And he's inadvertently utilised this to make a successful video game out of those events. So he's still subconsciously aware that something is off in this simulated world. But again, this is not explained at any point in the movie. And if that's the case, could Trinity see his real image or the old guy version? Apparently she could see his real image. But there were just so many stupid convenient plot points that were created out of coincidence. They wanted to make love a key theme in this movie which is why Trinity and Neo could see each other for their real self. The analyst explains that this new Matrix world would be a disaster if Neo and Trinity were either too close to each other or too far. They had to be somewhere in the middle. And that's a clear sign of lazy writing to force their inevitable reunion. Why would keeping them too far from each other be dangerous? Their memories are completely wiped so they wouldn't know anything about each other. Maybe if they explain this at 
any point in the movie I would be a little less confused, but they don't. Or maybe I might have missed it because I was half asleep from the lack of energy in the action. And that's what bothered me a lot about Resurrections. The Matrix was known for its excellent and mind-blowing action. It was revolutionary. It's been over 20 years and still holds up. Looking at the action in Resurrections, and they've managed to make it look worse. Do you know how much technology has improved in 20 years? And you come up with this lame choreography that is infinitely inferior to the original. Even the effects were worse. Going through the mirror was cool and the apple bursting in slow motion were the only decent effects in the film. But we now live in a world where the John Wick movies have better action than The Matrix. How has that happened? The Matrix Resurrections had a $190 million budget, while John Wick 4 had $100 million. Resurrections was pretty much double the budget of John Wick 4, and yet it's inferior to John Wick because they actually planned out the choreography. There's thought gone into the consequences of being punched, but I have to sit through Neo being tickled by Morpheus in a dojo. All I can say is this film did not want to be a sequel. They wanted to start from scratch. It wanted to restart the franchise, but they couldn't make up their minds if they wanted the film to be a sequel or a straight reboot, just like they couldn't figure out who the main villain was going to be. If they wanted this to be a reboot, then they should have cast different actors. The movie was trying to be too smart for its own good, except it didn't make sense. 60 years have passed in the real world, so why does Neo and Trinity look like they've only aged 20 years, whereas Niobe has aged differently, when they were all the same age? Do they live longer in the pods? No, they don't. And even if they did, it was never explained. This movie is full of plot holes and illogical sequences. And when they do explain something, I'm so bored out of my mind. It just makes me want to go back to the first Matrix, when Morpheus visually explains the perception of reality and illusion. Simpler times. But instead, they continue to make cheap references to a better movie, while at the same time destroying any hope of this franchise becoming a hit ever again. You look like shit. Just like this movie, what are the chances? This is where we part ways, viewers. You'll see me next at the premiere of Matrix 5, The Matrix Redacted. You can't miss me. I'll be the one holding an AK-47.